of World Championship Boxing. Some boxers wait an entire career for that one great chance, while others fight in search of their one great challenge. Every so often, both dreams are realized, but rarely are they fulfilled for two fighters on the very same night. At 147 pounds, Buddy McGirt is the WBC welterweight champion. At 140 pounds, Pernell Whitaker is the IBF junior welterweight champion. Pound for pound, they are two of boxing's best. Tonight, they face each other in the biggest tests of their respective careers. This fight gives us the opportunity to prove who's the best in the world today. His professional career has spanned 11 years, 62 fights. Yet despite his having won two titles, Buddy McGirt has never gotten the recognition that usually goes to a fighter with such credentials. Tonight, he gets his chance. In all my years of fighting, this is the challenge I've been waiting for. A chance to fight for the welterweight title of the world. And what better place than Madison Square Garden? First, he won the lightweight championship. Then, he won the junior welterweight title. And while Pernell Whitaker has accomplished so much, he has seldom been fully tested. So tonight, Pernell Whitaker looks not only for a third title, but also for the challenge he's been waiting for. For one, it's the chance. For the other, the challenge. For both, the championship. Buddy McGirt against Pernell Whitaker for the welterweight championship of the world. love to claim that it's the biggest and the best at just about everything. An appropriate setting for one of the premier boxing matchups of the year. Tonight, we're bringing you back live for the second time in a month to Madison Square Garden to bring you the WBC welterweight championship of the world as Buddy McGirt defends his title against junior welterweight champion, moving up in weight again, Pernell Whitaker. One month ago, we had a mere sellout crowd in Madison Square Garden for Riddick Bowe's one-round destruction of Michael Dokes in a heavyweight championship fight. Tonight, despite worrisome advanced sales, a lot of late ticket buyers have shown up to again produce a respectable New York boxing crowd for one of the biggest fights of the year. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. A month ago, it was Bo's one-round whack-out of Michael Dokes. Tonight, we are at entirely the opposite end of boxing's artistic spectrum to bring you what should be a highly aesthetic battle between two outstanding and skillful purists in the sport, Pernell Whitaker and Buddy McGirt. Here, as always with me, is HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And Larry, going into this fight, there is so much focus on the technical skill of both fighters that you begin to worry whether you're going to see a clinic instead of a battle of fisticuffs. What do you think? Well, one thing I'm very certain of, Jim, and that's that I'm not going to get blood sprayed on my shirt as we did in the last fight when James Tony butchered Iran Barkley. But we will get sprayed on a lot of sweat. I do think a fight will break out. Folks, what we have here tonight is one for the fans of the sweet science of boxing rather than the brutal truths of prize fighting. Buddy McGirt and Pernell Whitaker are stylish, almost perfect boxers, throwbacks to another time, a time when violent chess was often the way this game was really played. And in addition to that, they're both champions, which means that they have the minds and the hearts of real prize fighters. I do think, Jim, that before this is over, we will see blood. But it's the blood of the pride and the passion these two men have in the skills they've worked so hard to, to hone. Indeed, they both have artist skills, which are impeccable. McGirt produced the best performance of 1991 in the eyes of many with his victory over Simon Brown. Whitaker has won brilliant raves for all of his performances in the past few years, but there is one major physical focus in tonight's fight. And for that, we turn to our expert analyst, former heavyweight champion and heavyweight contender, George Foreman. George, 
less than seven weeks ago, or actually just a little more than seven weeks, less than eight weeks ago, Buddy McGirt came into this building for a 12-round defense against a Mexican fighter named Gennaro Leon, a fight in which McGirt, for the last 10 rounds of the fight, barely used the left hand, never threw a left hook. Now, he arrives here 53 days later and claims that the left shoulder, which has bothered him so much, is 100%. Likely or unlikely? Well, I can tell you this. If you want to be remembered as a great contender, wait until your body get healed and fight. But if you want to be a true champion, you fight, there's always going to be something wrong. A left hook? Forget the left hook. Throw many more right hands. That's not going to stop him if he really want to win. You can't hurt a guy. Boxing is always something wrong with you. If it's not your feet, it's your toe, it's your head, your ankle, you can fight. It doesn't matter. Indeed, this is one of the most experienced fighters in the sport, Buddy McGirt. So fighting within limitations will be nothing new to him. The danger? Having to do it against maybe the very best opponent of his entire career. Most fighters start out at CD Club gyms. James Buddy McGirt was no different. But there is a difference now between McGirt and other champions. He never left. From this simple gym in Jersey City, McGirt has become a fixture on the New York boxing scene. Working out of the same squalor as his predecessors, Buddy has styled himself like fighters from the distant past. I just want to fight and go home. That's it. That's all I want to do. I don't want to sit in the ring and stand in the ring for an hour, jump on top of the ropes, grab the microphone and say hello to everybody. No, thank you. Have a good day, but got to go. Where Buddy often goes is to his manager, Al Serto's tailor shop. There, Serto gathers some of the old New York area fighters, like Jersey Joe Walcott, like Joey Giardello, and Mustafa Hamsha, to talk boxing. What we basically do is start an argument between the old fighters. You know, and then they say how they would have fought this one and the move they would have made. You, you take all that and you just put it in your mind and you remember it. What Buddy also remembers are his past injuries. Fighting Meldrick Taylor with his junior welterweight title on the line. Buddy was saddled with an ear infection and lost the fight and the title. In the third round against Jose Bermudez, McGirt tore his left bicep. In a performance the old-time fighters would have been proud of, but he won the decision with some slick defense. And in his last fight against Gennaro Leon, McGirt's chronic tendonitis in his left shoulder flared up. Don't be afraid to use your left hand. You can use it. With just one arm, he barely won. McGirt's lessons from the old masters included determination. You look at um, Judge Joe Walcott, how long it took him to get a title fight. He was 39 years old. You know, if, if good laws will, I hope to be retired by 39, you know. So for him to have, you know, to have that great determination and you fight for the title, the first fight he beat Joe Lewis, you know, and he, he got robbed. Tonight, McGirt will need some old-fashioned tenacity. This bout comes just seven weeks after the Leon fight. Precious little time for shoulder rehabilitation. I would have liked to have more time to work with Buddy um, to deal with his pain and inflammation myself and uh, progress him slowly with the exercises. But we had to get uh, sports-specific and work on functional exercises right from the get-go. In combination with his regular boxing training, Buddy spends more than two hours per day on a crash course to get his shoulder back to 100%. The strength has returned, but his confidence hasn't. As of the 23rd, he still hasn't thrown his hook in sparring yet, but he's throwing it against a bag, and we do a lot of simulation with the medicine ball uh, where he comes across his body and he gets the impact. Um, so if he had to fight today, he might just throw the hook and it'd be great, or he'd be, because he hasn't practiced it, he might be, have a little deficit there. Buddy McGirt's left was instrumental the night he won the title from Simon Brown. He needs it back now against Whitaker. It's like a case of knowing the opener's there and you could throw the punch, but I didn't throw the punch. And I was just a case of just letting it get stronger each day. So if I throw it, I could be breaking it down one notch, whereas if I don't, it'll build up one notch. And then, you know, it's like a domino effect. So it builds up each day and then Come March 6th, when I see the opening, I'm going to let it go. Buddy McGirt's appreciation for boxing history tells him to shrug off a sore shoulder. Tonight's chance is too fleeting. Fighting to be called the pound-for-pound -pound best in the world. Fighting in Madison Square Garden. But that's something that can never be taken away once you step into the ring. You know, you just go down there and within history books with those great fighters that's fighting there. You know, you always dream of fighting in the garden, fighting a main event, and fight on HBO there. So everything just falling in place at the same time.
To keep his precious title, he must fight past his pain. Recent history says Buddy McGirt needs to be the complete warrior he once was in order to be victorious tonight. We bring you back live to Madison Square Garden on the Great White Way. Minutes away from the start of the bout between WBC World Welterweight Champion and the man who will try to take that title from him tonight, Pernell Whitaker. Now, the feature piece on McGirt that you just, just saw was shot and completed several days ago. During that same time frame, the New York State Athletic Commission commissioned a doctor to examine McGirt's left arm and see if, in fact, he's physically ready for tonight's fight. Earlier tonight, Larry Merchant asked the doctor what he found in that examination. Well, I examined Buddy McGirt approximately 10 days ago and last evening. This examination is normal. Currently, he has a full range of motion that's painless and his strength is adequate. I do not anticipate any problems in terms of his fighting. Is your medical judgment the same thing as an athletic judgment that he can use it? Well, medically, he can use it. Uh, his athletic ability, his ability is up to him. So that question remains about McGirt. Meanwhile, for Whitaker, Tonight represents another step toward a mark in the history of the sport of boxing. Tonight, Brunel Whitaker will try to become only the fourth fighter in the history of the sport to have won the lightweight title at one stage of his career and then go on to win the welterweight title 12 pounds up the road. There are the names of the others who have done it, and they are legendary names. Barney Ross in 1935, Henry Armstrong in 1938, Roberto Duran in 1980. George Foreman, the big question for Whitaker is weight. He moves up again, second time in less than a year, this time from 140 to 147. McGirt is seen by everybody as the bigger man, and one of the older adages in boxing is the good big man will beat the good smaller man. Does it apply here? <laughs> I don't think so, but it's nice to see someone's moving up in weight. There are no banana and not split jokes. Black board, yeah. right? No yeah. banana split jokes. But I can tell you this, the weight won't bother. If he physically and mentally knows that he can do it, there's nothing that can stop him. Probably the other guys lost trying because they just weren't the better boxer. Of course, you want to pay attention to semantics here because as I said the rule is a good big man will beat a good little man but in the case of Pernell Whitaker Larry Merchant many people would say you're not talking about a good littler man you're talking about a great littler man one of the greater fighters in history does his name belong in the same breath with Barney Ross and Henry Armstrong and Roberto Duran well certainly we're gonna start to find out tonight I mean that is the question what happens if it's a great little man against a good big man in all the fights we cover of uh, Pernell Whitaker, I find the uh, spirit of charity rising in me every time I give his opponent a round. Nobody ever gets a fight from him, for goodness sakes. But there's the history. Many, many outstanding lightweights have tried to move up to welterweight and failed. You saw the graphic before. In the 55 years since the great Henry Armstrong went from lightweight champion to welterweight champion, only one fighter has done it, and that was the great Roberto Duran. So we have to ask ourselves, Jim, has Pernell Whitaker, like his stable mates, Meldrick Taylor and Evander Holyfield, reached beyond where his natural body weight is into a land that he really can't handle? It's been smooth sailing for him up to now, though. Pernell Whitaker gifted almost beyond comparison in the sport of boxing with an Olympic gold medal, two world championships already in his career. Tonight, he tries to take another step in history. I'm doing this for me, you know. I'm stepping up to 147. No one asked me to step to 147. I'm doing this because I want to do it, and I feel like I can do it. It's a challenge to me. There comes a time in many a fighter's career when the word challenge is the driving force of motivation. Money is why they fight. Recognition comes from the championships. But the challenge of beating a quality opponent is a prize fighter's internal catalyst. For junior welterweight champ Pernell Whitaker, that's what Buddy McGirt represents. It was a great opportunity to start giving the fans what they really want to see, what they pay their money to see. They want to see the big fights. They want to see what we call pound for pound the best fighters fight each other so I figured you know that after winning that title that there was no one else out there that could challenge a Pernell Whitaker or give a Pernell Whitaker a challenge or, or make him go and prepare 
And then I saw the Buddy McGirt opportunity. And from McGirt, a tough fight is what Whitaker is banking on. Something Purnell hasn't encountered much of since turning pro in 1984. This also gives Whitaker the chance to move up another weight class and see how his skills will measure up against one of boxing's best. I've never been as excited about one title as I am for this welterweight title. I've never been as much up for one particular fight, and I've never been in a training camp away from Virginia as long as I have for this fight. You know, this is four weeks here, and I just wanted to get away, and I want to be mentally and physically prepared. I want to be Superman when I go in that ring. But what if Buddy McGirt lacks the kryptonite to push a Superman-style Fernell Whitaker to the limit? What if this fight does not prove to be the complex and difficult challenge Brunel Whitaker has hoped for? I need the Buddy McGriff fight as much as anything else. And if he's not 100%, then he should mail me the title because I'm not taking anything less than 100%. I'm not giving him no excuses about any shoulder problems or any arm problems. I want him to bring his best and have his best with him because I'm going to be at it and I'm going to see what he has. So many fighters are satisfied to parade their laurels, expecting the boxing public to applaud any and all victories. But true champions continue to take risks. They're willing to fail and willing to challenge the best. Pernell Whitaker has never been afraid, never even allowed an opponent to give him reason to be. Always, and it, it, really, it really hurts me and it really upsets me when I always had to, to try to prove myself. And every fight I had, you know, it was whether I can take the big punch I was always the underdog. Zuma Nelson supposed to be in the test. Ramirez was a test. Howie was a test. Some thought Nazario would be a test. Anthony Baby Jones, was he a test? Diaz. Paez, Harold Brazier, Rafael Pineda, all of them opponents who never really tested Purnell Whitaker. Maybe then a victory over McGirt will finally give Purnell the respect he craves and greater rewards down the road, something past opponents haven't been able to provide. In the meantime, the man they call Sweet Pea goes about his business as he's done for nearly a decade now, waiting and hoping for that one signature opponent to challenge his ring artistry. It has been a career pursued at the highest levels of the sport for a long, long time. Lou Duva, Cutman, Ace Murata, coming out in front of the almost always indescribably calm Pernell Whitaker. There is, is maybe not another fighter in the sport who is so comfortable with his position as a world champion and so expects to succeed as Brunel Whitaker, who will always tell you before every fight that he's about to fight the greatest fight of his life. Never anything other than supremely confident. And Jim, we just learned minutes ago that Brunel Whitaker has a deal to fight Julio Cesar Chavez before the end of the year, win or lose tonight. And further, Lou Duva has confirmed that Whitaker does not know yet about the deal. They don't want him thinking about the fight. They don't want him letting down or getting overexcited because it's something he's wanted for a long time. They certainly wouldn't tell him because the deal is win or lose, and it could have interfered with his incentive for winning tonight's fight. There's the record, 31 wins, one loss, that against Jose Luis Ramirez in Paris in a fight in which Purnell injured his hand and couldn't throw power punches in the latter rounds. He later avenged that defeat with a near whitewash decision over Ramirez in his hometown of Norfolk, Virginia. Trying to join Ross, Armstrong, and Duran as lightweight champions to win the welterweight title. And there is the champion, and this crowd will be a Buddy McGirt crowd tonight. It is the 26th time 
in McGirt's 63 fight career that he has fought in Madison Square Garden or one of its subsidiaries, the Paramount Theater and the Felt Forum. No other fighter wears the New York banner so indelibly and with so much crowd support as Buddy McGirt. The question about this fighter is this. Is he really a brilliant studio musician or a wonderful character actor? Or can he make that leap to being a soloist and a leading man? Does he have the dream, the imagination, to want to really be in the big time and to let it all go to make it happen? Preceded into the ring by his outspoken manager and trainer, Al Serto who has been at war with boxing authorities for years over what he sees as the failure of the sport to give Buddy McGirt the kinds of opportunities he should have had. When he won a title and then eventually lost it to Meldrick Taylor, it took him 19 fights thereafter to get another title shot. Serto complained, perhaps with justification, that few other fighters would have been shut out for that long. Or had the persistence to go through it. There is the record, 59 wins, two losses, one loss to Frankie Warren, the other to Meldrick Taylor, as we said, and there is a common thread there, Larry Merchant. Both of them trained by Georgie Benton, as is Pernell Whitaker. As we look at Buddy McGirt being examined by referee Larry Hazard, and there's a story there that we'll tell you in a few seconds, we go to the tail of the thing. Whitaker weighing in at 146 and a quarter for this, only his second fight as a welterweight. The first one lasted less than two minutes, and it was a first-round knockout for Brunel. You can see a small reach advantage for McGirt. On paper, they are just about the same size, but Buddy McGirt presents the bigger picture in the ring. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here's a profile about how these fighters fight, how active they are, and as you can see, Pernell Whitaker, much more the active fighter. And George Benton, his trainer, believes he has to stay active to throw McGirt out of a rhythm he likes to get into. Jabs, Whitaker throws more of them, but McGirt is probably heavier. Rules of the bout now from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. James Buddy McGirt and Pernell Whitaker will box tonight using a combination of the rules of the World Boxing Council and the New York State Athletic Commission. 12 rounds. The standing eight count is in effect. No three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards if the three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim? And to enforce the rules, an eccentric decision by New York State Commissioner Randy Gordon, who chose New Jersey State Commissioner Larry Hazard to referee the bout, even though Hazard hasn't refereed a professional fight for eight years. Earlier tonight, our Larry Merchant asked Randy Gordon why he made the unexpected choice of Larry Hazard as the ref. On the surface, Larry, he, right, he hasn't refereed in eight years. But the man has been working at every single day. It's not like he became a helicopter pilot or a NASCAR racer. He's been out there every single day running three to eight miles. Every day when he leaves his office in Trenton, New Jersey, he stops in the gyms, he moves around with the kids, he's at ringside virtually every night of the week. The man, I thought, was the finest referee of all time. When you see him, you're going to think he's never been away one day. McGirt's man, Al Serto, sees the appointment of Hazard as a concession to the New Jersey-based Duva organization that controls Whitaker. For at their part, the Duvas say that they didn't want to give McGirt any more of a home court advantage than he already has, and therefore didn't want to see a New York State referee in the ring. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Ed Darian for the pre-fight introductions. We're live from the Gavel, New York City's Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, as Madison Square Garden Boxing, main events monitor, and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers, proudly present the WBC Wellaway Championship of the World, and is approved by the New York State Athletic Commission.
the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman, Rose Trentman and Herb Washington Commissioners, and is sanctioned by the WBC, the Honorable Jose Suleiman President, the Supervisor in Charge and Attendance at Ringside for the WBC, is the Honorable Robert Bussey from Texas. The chief physician in attendance at ringside this evening is Dr. Barry Jordan, along with Dr. Richard Estrico and Dr. Jeff Ladd. The timekeeper of the bell is Cecilio Tito Petraja. The judges working this title bout, Chuck Jampa from Las Vegas, Nevada, Rudy Ortega from San Francisco, California, and Dalby Shirley from Las Vegas, Nevada. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of this scheduled 12 round title bout and will be working his 38th championship fight, Larry Hazard. And now my good friends, introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the red trunks with the black trim. He tipped in at 146 and one quarter pounds. Professionally, he has 31 wins, one loss with 15 knockouts. He is the current IBF Junior Welterweight Champion and the challenger for the WBC Welterweight Champion. Here is from Norfolk, Virginia, Pernell, Sweet P. Whitaker. Whitaker. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at an even 147 pounds. Professionally, this young man has 59 wins, two losses, one draw, with 44 knockouts. Here is the WBC Rollaway Champion from Brentwood, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here is James Buddy McGurk. I've already gone over the rules with you. Let me remind you, obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, and refrain from following. Shake hands now. Come out fighting at the bell. Jim, this is the biggest Wellaway championship fight since Ray Leonard fought Tommy Hearns 12 years ago. If it's half as good as that one, we've got something to look forward to. Back up, back up, Pete, back up. Boy, you don't want to be a referee at all in a fight like this. And one has been out for so long. Larry Hazard has taken on quite an assignment tonight, hasn't he, George? I may, I may be a little too much. You're suggesting that it may not have been a wise choice. Doesn't look like it. Remains to be seen whether the referee will become a factor. Certainly the left hook for Buddy McGirt will be a factor. We'll be tracking them throughout the fight to see if he throws them with the frequency that he's thrown them in his past fights. And we are told that Buddy McGirt in his dressing room before the fight was throwing left hooks to hand pads. McGirt is known as a slow starter. Whitaker, statistically, by far the busier fighter in his previous fights. And many suggest that Purnell will want to jump on top of McGirt early and try to disrupt his rhythm with a lot of punches. Ahead, so far, Sweet Pea hasn't done that. Sweet Pea has already started to hit on the left arm of McGirt. Well, we suspect George Benton will have told Whitaker to try to go ahead and hit McGirt's left shoulder, see if the arm falls off. It's not the hitting of the shoulder that really hurts, it's the throwing those punches without any balance. Hold on, no punch on the break. And Hazard's first significant move is to warn Whitaker about punching on the break. All right, let go, Pete. Let him go, Pete. One thing Hazard brings to the job is a booming voice. That's right, and he, he has some demand. showboating from Whitaker, who threw a punch behind his back. It reminds you of one of those little guys who walks into a bar and says, hey, I'll fight any big guy in here. Just a mean little guy. Yeah, he has that kind of consciousness for sure. Claims that when he was a kid, before his amateur stardom days, he used to spar with heavyweights in the gyms in Norfolk, Virginia. This is 
the sixth time in Buddy McGirt's career that he has been in the ring with a southpaw. Actually, the seventh time. He fought six previous southpaws and has knocked out five of them. Whitaker trying to go to the body with the left. Purnell, in recent years, has become an accomplished body puncher. The thing about Buddy McGirt, he's knocked down two welterweights who's melted down from middleweight. into the ropes. It's going to cost us a tactical first round, but Pernell Whitaker, true to form, has been the busier of the two fighters. basketball player and fan throwing a behind-the-back pass. It's a mean thing to do. Rennell shot free throws at halftime of a Knicks game two nights ago to help promote this bout. And true to form, was bragging outrageously about his free throw shooting skill the day after. Clockers, Logan Hobson and Bob Canobio tell us that Buddy McGirt has not yet thrown a left hook. But he landed the right hand over the top and now tries to follow up. And Brunel Whitaker ties him up inside. Brunel knows a lot of tricks in there, George. And he's going to need a lot of tricks with such a strong opponent of that nature. And the first trick he shouldn't be pulling is trying to be such an aggressor so early. Body shot by McGirt. And now a right hand over the top. Buddy McGirt, much more aggressive in the first minute of round two. There's a solid left hand by Pernell Whitaker. And that stops McGirt in his tracks for the moment. Right hand by McGirt landing. If they trade power shots, that will operate to McGirt's advantage. The, the bad thing about McGirt's right hands he's landing, he's, ha he's not having to search for them. So Pernell Whitaker's bringing it right to him. It's like, hit me again. Again, the left hand lands for Whitaker. All right, put the way out. Put the way out. Keep the right hand up. All right. Hold on, man. Pull it out. Let him go, Pete. Keep up in there. Another right hand over the top by McGirt. Two in a row. And you're right, George. Whitaker seems to be an easier target for McGirt than he has been for most of his previous opponents. When you're fighting a bigger man, he's supposed to search for you. You're not supposed to go searching for him. Body shot by Whitaker. Drives McGirt back into the ropes. Buddy trying to go over and under with the right hand. Still no left hooks from Buddy McGirt. He loves to finish his combinations with him. He does not yet seem confident about throwing one. And as I said earlier, hey, you're a boxer. Right hands are as just as effective as left hooks. Why worry about a left hook? Trading shots inside again. And for now, it appears that Brunel Whitaker is going to get hit in this fight more than perhaps in any previous bout. Starting to unleash the jab. McGirt trying to come back with a jab of his own. Not as crisp, it seems, early as he was with the jab in his brilliant performance against Simon Brown, November of 1991. Crowd chanting, buddy, buddy, buddy. Whitaker steps up the aggression in reserve. McGirt throws his left jabs and then holds his balance, which is important. Jab will stop the right hand from, stop the 
started from fire, do you understand? You can't get the right hand to go as long as you're jabbing at it. Because you're in, your jab is in his way, right? Now listen, when you throw your left cross, lean out okay. so you don't run into his right hand. You got me? Because he's fighting, he's fighting with every damn thing on it. Now you're looking real good. You keep that jab going. Look, now when you got close there, you're Five punches. Finish off with the jab. Swallow the water. Close up those legs a little bit. Get on your toes. All right? And don't forget the face. Slide. Come on. Come on, boy. Don't let him take any slides. George Benton was a little concerned about the right hands that Pernell Whitaker is catching, which is certainly uncharacteristic for him. But at the same time, Pernell Whitaker probably won those first two rounds. So we're going to have to find out if McGirt is going to be more aggressive. Now McGirt is doing something wise. He's landed a few heavy right hands. Now he's moving around, making the guy come to him. When you're fighting a Whitaker, you make you try to win the fight on points. Forget about knocking him out. These are two of the best slip and counter punches in the game today. If both are aggressive, both ought to be able to score, score, score with counter punching. There's the left hand for Whitaker. Leaping in behind the left. McGirt is fighting the kind of fight that Pernell Whitaker should be fighting. Okay, that's right. Step clean. Go for it. Every time McGirt got in trouble in the very troublesome Gennaro Leon right, fight on on January 12th, Al Cerdo asked him to bounce and move. Bounce and move. Left hook over the top by Whitaker. McGirt lands a right hand in return. George, I still have Buddy McGirt throw a left hook. And I don't really think he should at this point. I think it's something he should say, say put in reserve until you know you're going to hit this guy. Because he can only miss so many times with an off uh, hurting left hook or some damage into it. Don't waste it. McGirt coming over the top with the right. Burnell begins to slug away and trade shots with him inside. Body punches and shots to the chin. Both men seemingly becoming more accurate here in round number three. Buddy up and under with the right uppercut. And two right hands over the top. Crowd warming to its support of Buddy McGirt. Whitaker reminds me of a guy who does not take instructions well. Solid left hand by Whitaker. McGirt came back with the right. It is almost impossible for most experts to imagine Burnell Whitaker knocking Buddy McGirt out. So you suspect that if they continue to trade power shots, George, it's going to redound to McGirt's advantage. And every time Whitaker throws a power shot, he falls power, so he's not able to hit, land two or three of them. So it's not doing him any good. He should hit this guy five times and make McGirt follow him. He is not following Benton's instructions to use the jab and try to slow down McGirt's right hand. He's leaning in there and taking right hand. Boy, this is world-class stuff, guys. You just don't see much of this fainting, jabbing, hooking. It's, it's just wonderful stuff. It's better than you could have imagined. This is, if this is chess, boy, it is violent chess. <laughs> Two brilliant boxers showing you how it is supposed to be done. And McGirt did exactly what he had to do in that round. He got more aggressive. Okay. Now, listen, that's it. Keep your head right close to him when you're on the inside, right? And get them hands off, right? That's the way there. Short punches around here. Now, look, keep your jab going. Now, look, keep, keep your jab going. The jab is working good. Now, look, don't back up so much. You understand? Don't back up so much. Here you're watching the almost lost art of in-your-face, close-quarter boxing. McGirt looking to throw the right hand has not yet thrown that left hook with any bad intentions on it. Round four begins. 
Springs in Madison Square Garden. Buddy McGirt, the Blue Trunks, defending his WBC World Welterweight Championship against IBF Junior Welterweight Letter Champion Fernell Whitaker. Harold Letterman, how do you have the right, fight score two, three up. rounds? Larry, two rounds to one, 29-28, Pernell Pete Bring Whitaker. Up. I think Whitaker's winning the fight on the clean punching. Uh, in the third round, Buddy McGirt came back and outpunched him with right hand, so I gave the third round to Buddy McGirt, but I thought Whitaker certainly landed the cleanest shots in the first two. <laughs> and after having been told by his trainer George Benton to jab more, Brunel Whitaker threw only 22 jabs out of 80 total punches in round number three. Now in round four, they are once again body to body, slipping and countering each other in a brilliant display of boxing. Thing in retaliation he's not he's not doing anything on his own when McGirt hits him he try and hit him back you can't go into a guy's hometown and start trying to be a counterpuncher you got to get him and Purnell had claimed coming into the fight that his aggression would be the difference he kept saying I'm going to go out and put my hands on him Whitaker, you have, you're not seeing much upper body movement at all. Standing with his head straight up, hoping he slips a punch. Rare for him because in the past, he has been brilliant at standing in front of his opponent and slipping away. But give credit to Buddy McGirt for accurate punching. He is landing that right hand with continuous precision. Believe me, welterweights can hit probably harder than any other class because of the in the legs. You just can't go round for round getting hit with right hands by a welterweight champion. Closing stages of round number four. Another tactical masterpiece. Buddy yes. McGirt seemingly beginning to assume control of the battle here. One of the better punches in the fight so far. And another. A big round for Buddy McGirt. Boy, you called it. <laughs> Look to TVKO next Saturday night for a special evening of boxing featuring World Light Flyweight Championship between title holders Michael Carbajal and Umberto Gonzalez, both of them champions. And the undercard is highlighted by 1992 Olympic gold medalist Oscar De La Hoya of East Los Angeles. Contact your local now. cable operator for the tales. He's trying to rough you up on the inside. He's got nothing else to offer. You understand? Stop, stop loading up. Just do what you do best. You understand? Get your punches off. Paint them into position. You paint, throw the jab. You paint with a, with, with a jab, throw a right hand. Okay? Keep moving that in. Keep moving that in. And don't punch, from, don't punch from too far away, right? Be, be close when you punch, you understand? Okay, over the top, over the top. Over the top, over the top. Round five begins. The pattern in the last two rounds has been that Whitaker begins with the jab early in the round and then tends to go away from it as McGirt lures him into a battle of power punches inside. So far, most of the heavy shots in the fight have been Buddy McGirt right hands, and they might pile up round by round, George Foreman. Uh, Whitaker's making a tragic mistake. He's trying to land a lot of body shots, and this guy's got a good body. He's got a good body. You're not going to take his power away and knock him out later. 
and his corner is telling him to get closer. And every time he gets closer, he gets hit with a jab. At some point, somebody's going to have to tell him something different. Well, since Brunel's first round knockout of Juan Nazario in a lightweight championship fight in August of 1990, at 140 and 147 pounds, every single one of his championship fights has gone the distance. So Brunel can't expect to come in looking for the knockout against anybody. And now they bump heads, and Larry Hazard talks to both fighters. Okay, let's go. Heads went bumping tonight, but no, no blood. It seems that all of the Duval Camp fighters, they look to the referee for help. The referee can't help you. He can only step in, keep the fight clean. McGirt landing a solid shot as Whitaker again steps inside. Grinnell still looking for a way to neutralize McGirt's right hand. Come up, Pete, come up. Good combination by McGirt. He has been allowed to get into his rhythm here. And Brunel Whitaker begins to chase Buddy McGirt around the ring, much as Simon Brown did in November of 1991. You can't chase McGirt. He's too good a counterpuncher. You've got to cut the ring off against him. Especially if you're the lighter guy by nature. Whitaker is fighting like a big heavyweight, looking for one knockout shot. Lunges in, and he can't get three punches together. McGirt lands just two or three punches and back away. Right hand by Whitaker, and then a left. One of the better combinations in recent rounds for Purnell. Fast hands by Buddy McGirt. McGirt throwing a fair number of left jabs. So the left shoulder certainly hasn't impeded him in that way. Doesn't seem to be throwing any left hooks, maybe just because of an absence of confidence in the punch. Maybe not because of pain. McGirt is determined every time Whitaker misses him, throw a shot anyway, which is a good tactic. Good and body he backs shot. away. Good body shot by McGirt, followed by a right hand. Brunel tries to do the same and takes another right hand for his trouble. Well, I said earlier, Jim, that it took the spirit of charity offered for me to give uh, Brunel Whitaker's opponents a round. I'm not having any such trouble tonight. <laughs> He's stabbing him with that left cross in the belly. You got me coming? Now, listen, every chance you get, I want you to stab him in the belly with that left cross. Because he's getting tired of hell. Okay. Can't you feel it? Yeah. All right, now listen, do not get careless. I want you to continue jabbing, 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 everything off the jab, right? Punch from too far away. Let that jab be your guidance stick. Let, let that jab be your ruler. You know? Every time we see you go to the body, we can see it on the outside. He's starting to double up. Understand? You got to go to that body on the inside. But jab your wing in. And when you get close, when you get close. All right, let's take a look at a statistical comparison of the number of times, according to our punched out numbers, that Buddy McGirt has thrown the left tonight as opposed to in previous fights. And there you see it. 112 left hands so far through five rounds here, 164 against Ponce and only 116 against Brown. So he's not that far off of his previous statistical profile. Most of them are jabs, but they certainly haven't been ineffective. Whitaker's corner has told him to keep landing body punches. The guy's getting tired. Well, after 12 rounds, you, you got to land some points. You just can't go for the weakening of the body. And there's Whitaker scoring inside. Accurate uppercuts. And the jab and the left hand. Brunel Whitaker sees his command in round number six. Driving McGirt into the ropes. Maybe those body punches will do him some good, George. No, at this point, he's trying to cruise and take him a little rest. But at the same time, Whitaker is a hard puncher. You just can't do it without being alert. Every fight will rest in the middle round. In recent years, almost all of Buddy McGirt's root-going performances have been marked by a flat stretch, maybe a tired period, in the sixth, seventh, and eighth rounds. That must be what Benton was thinking about when he urged Whitaker to believe that McGirt was getting tired. And, uh, and fighters got too much experience to truly get tired. You can plug him, but you're not going to make right, him tired. Work your way out. Work your way out but he likes to save his energy for the ninth through twelfth round, the championship round. And it's not a bad strategy if you're as good as Buddy McGirt. No holding. No holding. Solid 
right hands by McGirt, two of them in a row. The round that seemed to belong to Whitaker early now moves back into a more neutral mode. Well, Whitaker's landing some good body punching, but the, the judges, they're looking at those hit shots that uh, McGirt is throwing. They're, they're watching that. They're not too sophisticated tonight. All three judges from the state of Nevada. Well, two from Nevada and one from California, but they are West Coast judges in effect. So we're not looking at New York scoring per se. Good flurry by Whitaker as McGirt throws against the ropes. If he's gonna go to the ropes, George, he'd better keep moving. The average fighter is hardly ever told to just stay alert. You got a half hour, 40 minutes out there, stay alert. Good body shot by Whitaker. And that time he blocked the right hand with his left hand. All right, put that out there. Put that out. A little bit of a mini comeback in round number six for Pernell Whitaker, who seemed to have been losing his grip in the three previous rounds. Okay. Now listen, you're handling them like a chair. When you get close, keep your hands free and go to work. Dead weight. Dead weight. You know what I'm saying? This guy's tired as hell now. You see what I mean? But you got to keep hustling. Okay. But throw dead weight. So that you hold your gas. Harold you Letterman, now, this is your right? score. Well, Larry, the New York scoring has got it three rounds each. 57 to 57. I got it that even. Uh, in rounds three, four, and five, I thought that Pernell Whitaker would move inside. You know, we score on effective aggressiveness. He would move inside, but he wouldn't let the shot go. And McGirt was killing him with right hands. But in round six, Whitaker moved inside and started a punch, and I thought he had punched uh, Buddy McGirt in the sixth round to even it up. So I got a dead even. Okay, 57 to 57. Seconds out. Harold, one of the rare times, I agree with you completely. This is an even fight. Six rounds to go. A landmark evening. Merchant and Letterman in total agreement after six. But the championship round still to come. Now, this is the area of the fight in which McGirt traditionally runs into his little Sargasso Sea. And let's see if Whitaker will try to step up the business in rounds seven and eight to take advantage of that trend. There's a left hand over the top that landed solidly. Maybe the best weapon of the night for Whitaker has been left-hand leads over the top, George. And for the first time, McGirt is trying to retaliate by coming forward to pay Whitaker back, which is what should have been happening from the beginning for Purnell. Now, hit him two or three times and step back. Make him come to you. Watch your head. Watch your head. Purnell Whitaker tapping the left side of his head to show Larry Hazard where he thinks Buddy McGirt is butting him. Hazard, incidentally, hasn't been a factor so far, and that's what a good referee should be. Virtually unidentifiable in there. Boy, that good referee is sweating tonight. He's working, isn't he? Too many days being a commissioner. <laughs> Whitaker landing the jab. McGirt comes back with a straight right hand. Purnell firing and ducking. Buddy McGirt starts going to the body. Purnell comes over the top with the left hand. McGirt hasn't gone to the body all that much. But he may seek to do so if Purnell Whitaker keeps firing over the top. Just missing with the left hook there. becoming increasingly accurate with the jab, George. And he's starting to take control of the fight by making McGirt come to him. So you think both fighters are better when they're backing up? That's right. And in the earlier rounds, as you said, McGirt was in control. Now Whitaker has taken control by making the guy come, come. That was Freddie McGirt's best left hook that just landed. 
You're right, he threw the left hook with abandon there. Let's see if he keeps doing it. Whitaker again over the top with the straight left hand. the counter without that left hook working all the time for him. The third is like a cowboy with a three shooter. But his manager Al Serto was quoted as saying, a one-handed Buddy McGirt can beat a three-handed Brunel Whitaker. Which may not be all that surprising. I'm not sure what Brunel would do with the third hand. You've got to stop, stand your ground, and use the jab the way he fires, make it miss and fight. You know what I mean? Open up because he's carrying you a little too fast now. And he'll start hitting you because you're moving too much. You stand your ground. Because see this guy, see, see he's bully whooping you now. He don't want to fight inside so much. And when he walks in, when he walks in, he gets There you see Whitaker on the attack early in the round. Later in the round, it was McGirt on the attack and Whitaker countering straight over the top. Classic textbook stuff. And George Foreman, I saw you shaking your head as George Benton told Whitaker to stand his ground. Not at all. He's been most effective by backing up, counter-punching. So why on earth would Benton be telling him to stand his ground? Evidently, he thinks he can get a knockout. But it's I'm not going to happen in that fashion. Doesn't seem likely. We'll see if Fresnel listens to him or chooses to do something else. For the moment, he's not backing up. Let go that head. Leave the head alone. George, George Benton believes that you can't let McGirt set his own tempo. So he wants him Watch more head, active than McGirt wants. That's his theory going into it, whether it works or not. You truly never stand your ground with a big guy with shoulders like that. You give him a little circle, left or right, make a circle. He's caught with a good right hand this time. A good right hand inside. And Whitaker grabs McGirt after the right hand, the tacit acknowledgement that he was momentarily stunned. You don't have a ground. You got a whole ring out there. Control it. Who needs to stand some ground? By standing his ground, Brunel presents a target to McGirt, which just isn't there when he backs away from it. And he hasn't been moving his head well enough at this point to start standing his ground. Indeed, he seems to move his head more, George, when he's going backwards. That's right, and he does. So, he's so effective when he goes backwards. over the top again by Whitaker. He's landed two of them in the last 30 seconds or so. The counter right hand landed there for Whitaker. Both fighters slowing the pace just a little bit in round number eight. Whitaker is more at ease with this happening around because he's fought with bigger guys. He's never fought them, but he's fought them. So you take it out of the sparring session and turn it into a fight. And that's what McGurdy has to do. He's got to fight. Don't start sparring with this guy. There's a solid right cross from McGurdy. Whitaker stands in there. Brunel's only been knocked down twice in his career at 135 pounds by Raphael Williams and Roger Mayweather. Gert has only been knocked down once, and that was by the exceptionally heavy-handed Tony Balthazar. And then only after he'd been thumped in the eye. Great straight left hand for Whitaker. Stuns McGirt. Whitaker's got bravery like a matador. He'll stand in there and try to throw you. Another left hand, which really hurt McGirt. And a counter shot for Whitaker as McGirt was throwing the right. Purnell is beginning to time Buddy's right. Pretty doggone well. He shows you with another counter left there. One thing I don't get is a sense in any way, really, that McGirt is stronger than Purnell Whitaker. All right. Boy, is it hot? Is bothering you? Yeah. You gotta try to do something, kid. What's up, baby? You understand? Your punches are coming out too slow. Your punches, no. are, your punches are coming out round. Look. Oh, 
got you got to let the punches flow. You you want to show one punch and see if you hurt him. Don't do that. You're gonna blow the title on yourself. Oh, give me. Look, man. Give me the hook, man. Give me that. Give me that mouth. Turn, turn. Don't take no shots. Move that head, baby. Your dab is working beautifully. Yeah. Your body. Just keep doing what you're doing. He can't find you when you're moving that head. Don't stand straight on the time. Just keep giving him a little move. Very often, boxers are thought to be not tough people. Pernell Whitaker is tough people. Amen. He's like a Ming vase. He's not like a Ming vase that when you drop him, it breaks. All right, get your tape he can take tape a punch. If you have been elsewhere for the evening and have just joined us, we welcome him at a Madison Square Garden where Buddy McCurt in the blue trunks is defending his WBC World Welterweight Championship against Pernell Whitaker, regarded by many as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport, coming up from 140 pounds to 147 in search of the third world championship of his career. And through eight rounds into the ninth, it is a virtually even fight, with both fighters having made statements and having taken some punishment. To show you the difference in the strength, Larry, when McGirt hit Pernell Whitaker, whole body shape. Whitaker has to throw an accurate shot right on the spot to make McGirt move at all. Now Larry Hazard warns Buddy McGirt for an obviously low blow. No points deducted so far. Between rounds, Al Serto was asking his buddy McGirt if the left shoulder was bothering him. Maybe Serto wants to see more left hooks. McGirt threw one to good effect a round to go. Work your way out. Go home. Let him go. But the very fact that you can remember that punch suggests that he's not throwing enough of it. He's definitely having some left hand problems, left arm problems, but it shouldn't bother him. He's been effective with a right hand anyway. A straight left hand by Whitaker pounded McGirt on the nose and stopped him in his track. Now McGirt comes through with the first solid right of the ninth round. And another solid right. And now Buddy McGirt's juices start to flow again with a minute to go in the ninth. And the crowd wakes up. Very soon we'll hear the dance of Buddy, Buddy, Buddy. New Yorkers rooting for the man who has fought in this building 26 times. <laughs> Whitaker with a body shot. McGirt missing over the top with the right hand. Pawing with the left, but no power shots with the left hand for Buddy McGirt. Still largely a one-handed fighter. And you got to remember, in fighting a southpaw, you need a good right-hand lead. The left hand is not the good power punch that you need. Here comes the Buddy chance. And it dies as Whitaker effectively counters inside. Straight left for Purnell, landed as McGirt tried to throw a right. The suspense builds in Madison Square Good Garden. right hand by Purnell Whitaker. And another, and another, George. Three left hands in the last 10 seconds of the round. Okay, hit it off. Better, better. You got to work the jab, though, buddy. And you got to try to punch a little straighter with that right hand, okay? Okay. Okay, baby? Right. You're doing the best you could. Hold it, huh? Take a deep breath. Come on. Deep breath. Give him some more water. Buddy, you do a little more fainting, all right? You got to punch a little bit more with the jab. You got to work the jab, buddy. You have to. Okay. Don't just walk Aaron in. Letterman, don't look at your Nine way. rounds. How do you have it? Larry, round six ten. rounds round to three, 87, 84, Pernell, Pete Whitaker. I think Pernell's starting to take charge of this fight in the last four rounds. He's just, uh, he throws the right jab and lands the solid left hand. It's the combinations that are winning it for him. And I don't think McGirt's landing enough right hands to offset what Whitaker's doing. Pernell Whitaker based on the clean effect of punching. I have Whitaker ahead, but just by five rounds to four. Well, you saw the ice bag on Buddy McGirt's left shoulder between rounds. The obvious indication that the shoulder is bothering him more than he had said it would coming into the fight. And you heard Alcerto telling Buddy, you've got to throw the jab. You've got to, even if you don't want to. McGirt just kind of shook his head. 
Whitaker is starting to pick up the pace with a stinging left jab at this right jab. Left hand over the top again by Whitaker. Burnell, sensing that McGirt might not be physically 100%, tries to move in for the kill. Not a knockout kind of a kill, a scorecard clinching kind of a kill. Which is important, when, especially when you're fighting a guy like McGirt who can really punch. Straight left, landing over and over now for Whitaker. The last 30 seconds of round nine, the first 30 seconds of round 10. Break. Step back, step back. Through it all, through some sometimes rocky moments, Cornell Whitaker has remained characteristically calm. I can't believe it. Crowd tries to lift McGirt. Whitaker peers in, looking for another chance to throw the straight left. McGirt lands a right hand as Cornell backs away. All right, come on, put the man Put the man dutifully observing Alberto's instructions to throw the left jab. But they are not solid jabs. And Brunel Whitaker moves forward now. McGirt's having problems now. He's trying to match speed with a guy who's much quicker. He should never have come to that. Should have stayed with just some aggressive here and there, some aggressiveness here and there. But don't try to be out be much quicker than Pernell Whitaker. It can't be. So with only one hand available to throw power shots, George, what can Buddy do to turn the tide again? Well, he should stay close and just start landing punches, try to win every round. Maybe that right hand will help. <laughs> but when you've been a counter puncher for all your career, it's a hard thing to try to change folks right in the middle of the screen, man. Yeah. Whitaker allowing McGirt to land the jab as he looks for opportunities to bring the left over the top, just like that. Whitaker countering to the body and coming back with combinations to the head. Brunel Whitaker picking up the pace in round 10 and trying to nail the coffin shut on Buddy McGirt's chances to score a decision. Brunel Whitaker on, eh? beginning to dominate this fight. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Hey, Pete. All right, now listen. Keep your smile off your face. I'm dead serious. Remember what I told you. You're in this one. You're in this Yeah, but don't be smiling, Captain. I'm talking like a master. I'm making two rounds. He's desperate now. Okay. Right, now stay that way. He's desperate now, right? Yeah, now listen. The guy's trying. This guy's trying to go for broke. Just keep doing what you're doing. Be careful. Don't take no unnecessary chances. Don't get cute. Keep on boxing the hell out of here. No. Give me your legs. Yeah, work, work. Do the best you could out there, champ, okay. all right? Try to throw your punch straight with the right hand. Don't look at your work. Do the best you could, champ. Over the top. You know what that means. That means he doesn't have much left. It means he may be losing his title in two more rounds. He has to do something big and dramatic very quickly, Buddy McGirt, or else he's an ex-champion. And you saw the lopsided punch stat numbers for round number 10 overwhelmingly in Whitaker's favor. Now we move into round 11. Both of these fighters well-versed in the art of going the full distance, going 12 rounds. Buddy McGirt has had 20 fights in his career that have gone 10 rounds or longer. Brunel Whitaker goes the distance in just about every championship fight. seemingly without the energy to try to mount Watch a furious Watch rally here. Work your way out. Work or your way perhaps out. looking for a one-punch shot to stun Whitaker and try to turn the tide all at once. <laughs> Only three men in the entire history of the sport have won the welterweight championship after having been lightweight champions earlier in their career. Henry Armstrong, Barney Ross, and Roberto Duran. Whitaker tries to add his name to that short list tonight. Right hand lands for McGirt. 
Best punch of the round for Buddy. Minute and a half to go in the 11th. The worst thing that could happen to Whitaker is start to get a little overconfident here. George Benton between rounds telling Brunel Whitaker not to showboat, not to smile, stay dead serious. The two fighters trading combinations again as they've done throughout most of the fight. the architect of the only two previous victories over McGirt. One by Freddie Pendleton and one by Meldrick Taylor. Will the pattern hold? Will trainer George Benton once again be McGirt's nemesis? Buddy trying to come on with the right hand. Crowd trying to lift their home favorite again. Right hand lands solidly. Madison Square Garden fans on their feet to root for Buddy. Whitaker tries to come back with the left. Good, great right hand again. Buddy McGirt has unleashed the right hand in round 11. And there it is again. Whitaker follows with the left. The two fighters training power shots at the peak of round 11. stretch and he's making one more run. Okay, now, now listen. Now, now listen, that's what I want you to do. Now the guy's going to be trying to bomb you with the right hand now. You understand? Now listen. Stay up close. No, stay, no, now you got to get Stay up close. But go up behind your jab. Because okay. he's trying to bomb you out. When you get close, yes, you... Yeah. Uh, same thing! Shoot that right hand straight as a nail. Give me water, water. All right, now stay up close. But you walk up behind the jab. You're gonna come fight in black and white because it is a throwback fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored going into the 12th? Jim, Jim, 106, 103, seven rounds to four, Perno Whitaker. Buddy McGirt landed enough right hands to win the 11th round, but Freddie McGirt ran out of rounds, Pernell's too far ahead. In his long and illustrious career, 62 fights coming into the night. Buddy McGirt's seen a lot of 12th rounds, but he's never before scored a 12th round knockout. By our lights, he probably needs one now to hold on to the world title he worked so hard to get after having at one point tumbled from the upper echelon of the sport when he was beaten by Pernell Whitaker's stablemate and good friend Meldrick Taylor in 1988. It took McGirt 19 more fights to get another title shot. Tonight, for the first time ever on HBO, the first time with this kind of audience, the first time with a seven-figure paycheck, he finds himself with one big chance for boxing glory. He's trying to make the most of it with only one arm and hoping to win the fight with the right hand only on power shots in the 12th. Pernell Whitaker looking for the undisputed title of best pound for pound in the world. Doesn't know that he already has a signed contract to fight Julio Cesar Chavez later this year, win or lose tonight. And Chavez has to be like all the rest of us, a fascinated spectator down the stretch. And the thing to remember, if this fight is a draw, it goes to McGirt. He retains the title, is that right? He returns, retains his title, if in fact the bout is a draw. And believe me, in my mind, it's been a little less than a draw. I can't see any man taking this fight over the other. But realistically, George, there are bigger fish to fry than the title for Brunel Whitaker. The only title he's interested in at this stage is best in the world. And if he beats McGirt and then beats Chavez, few would be willing to deny him that distinction. I can tell you this fight has been even, and McGirt, in my mind, has won and retained his title. 
Well, George, you disagree with Larry Merchant and Harold Letterman, that's for sure. But maybe not with many in the crowd here as they rise to their feet in the closing minute of round 12. Buddy McGirt has put on a stirring effort here in the last three minutes. And he did for the first four or five rounds also. Whitaker pounding away. The left hand landed big. And another. McGirt stunned in the last 20 seconds. You've got two champion hearts on full and open display. None from New York. In fact, the only New York licensed judge scoring the bout here tonight is our own Harold Letterman. <laughs> and his scorecard doesn't count. So let's start with final punch stat numbers and take a look at the statistical profile of the bout according to Logan Hobson and Bob Canobio who count the punches. And there you have it. Whitaker landing more by almost 100. Whitaker landing at a higher percentage. But McGirt with the right hand surely landed the heavier blows. It's been a great fight. It's seldom I start to rock and roll in my seat. <laughs> for welterweights, George, you were rocking and rolling for those 147 pounders, my man. I love it. Whitaker's so brave. <laughs> Ring announcer Ed Darien examining the scorecards as he gets ready to reveal the results to us. Now let's take a look at Harold's final numbers. Harold, how did you score it? Jim, 115, 113, seven rounds to five, Pernell Pete Whitaker. You know, Jim, he ought to be ashamed of himself clowning in the last two rounds like that. There's no question Buddy McGirt won those last two rounds, but Pernell didn't even try as I saw it. But he just won too many rounds when he swept rounds six, seven, eight, nine. You know, he just won those middle rounds, and, and I think he piled up enough points to win it. Well, I'm on pins and needles now, Harold, and we're going to check in with Ed Darien, the ring announcer, for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden here in New York, we've got the scoring and a points. Judge Dalby Shirley observed 117-111. Judge Rudy Ortega, he watched it at 115, 114. And Judge Chuck Jumpa, he observed 115, 113 for the winner by unanimous decision. And the brand new WBC Railway Champion, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. Whitaker. World champion at 135 pounds. World champion at 140. Comes into Buddy McGirt's home court, Madison Square Garden in New York, and joins Barney Ross, Henry Armstrong, and Roberto Duran as the only four men in the history of the sport ever to have won the World Lightweight Championship and then later in their careers gone 12 pounds up the road to win the welterweight title. But the title that most interests Whitaker is the mythical distinction of best pound for pound in the sport. And now, somewhere down the road, we are told he is guaranteed a chance to fight Julio Cesar Chavez in a fight which will surely be billed as the battle for that 
distinction. And Larry Merchant is standing by with the winner. Purnell, did you know going into this fight that you already had a contract to fight Julio Cesar Chavez, win or lose? No, I didn't, and it really didn't matter. Uh, I, I was very focused on what I had to do tonight with a, uh, one of top, one of pound for pound's best buddy McGurk. I didn't, I didn't leave that up to the, uh, my organization to handle that. Danny Shelley, Lou, and all those guys. Am I giving you news when I tell you that? You giving me news, but good it's news. good news. You know, <laughs> the fight was a good fight. And uh, was that the best fight you've ever fought in terms of the competitiveness of it and the quality of the opposition? I would say yes, but I want to ask you what you think. How would you answer that question? I want to question you this time. What you think, Larry? Two terrific fighters. You won the fight. He was fighting with about an arm and three quarters. Did you That's know okay. that he... I, I said I wanted no excuses. You're right. No did, you, did you know and realize early on that he didn't wasn't using his left hook? No, I didn't really pay it any mind. Like I said, when I walked in this ring tonight, I didn't want any excuses. When I win, I wanted to win. If he had won, then we had never we would have never heard about the uh, the left shoulder. But it was fine. I was fine. I was just at my did best. He, uh, he hit you with a lot of right hands. Did you get hurt at all? Not at all. Not at all, Larry. And, uh, and that's just quiet some of the critics. I can be hit, but uh, I'm a great defensive fighter. I don't get hit as often. And I like to say hi to all my, my three sons, Pernell, Don Tavius, and Dominique, along with Ryan, and, and Twan, and the rest of the Whitaker family. You've joined Roberto Duran, Henry Armstrong, Barney Ross as the only fighters ever to win the lightweight and welterweight divisions. Do you have a sense of the historical importance of what you've done? Well, hopefully now I can sit back, enjoy this one, and start getting the recognition for being pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And, um, and now I'm a, after this great uh, contest, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to let the fans enjoy it. I'm going to start getting my just dues for, being a, for beating a great fighter. And I did miss one of my boys. I missed the, my dog, Thunder. <laughs> Larry, you said about the, the Chavez fight. You say it's, it's supposed to be made? Well, let's get it on. Let's put it on. Let, let, let's get it ready. I'm, we're ready. You, all right, we'll wait a half hour, and we'll get that one Fine, on. Let's ready. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. Congratulations, Thank Pernell. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks HBO. HBO. Okay, Jim, back to you, and then I'll be right back with Buddy McGirt. All right, that's terrific, Larry and George. Let's pay a little tribute. They were both pretty doggone great tonight. Yeah, don't one you of think? the finest uh, welterweight fights I've seen in years. I mean, they were great. This fight could have went both ways in my mind. Too bad I'm not a judge. Uh, while Larry was conducting that interview, Buddy McGirt was telling some of our people off camera that he lost the use of his left arm for power punching, in effect, on or uh, along or about the fourth round. Uh, as you see it, was that the critical factor in the fight? Uh, I don't think so. This Pernell Whitaker is so skillful. At some point or other, he got his courage back. He started drawing this guy forward, and he started picking up the points. That's, that's all. He couldn't have done any better if he had an extra arm, the left, right, and a belly. And the key he couldn't strate have done any better. The key strategic move in the fight came when Pernell was willing to back up and let Buddy McGirt come to him. He took over then. He was a better counterpuncher than McGirt. He didn't have the better power. McGirt had the best power, which why I thought the fight could have went the other way. But I'm so happy because it was a great fight for the people in Madison Square Garden for a change. Yeah, it was a tremendous battle and redeems Madison Square Garden from the ignominy of having hosted last month's Bo Dokes debacle. Right now, let's talk with the other champion in the ring tonight as Larry stands by with Buddy McGirt. Larry? Buddy, you stated many times before the fight you didn't want to make excuses because of your left arm, but we have to ask you because you didn't throw what many believe was your money and your championship punch very often at all. When did you know that you couldn't throw it? Before or during the fight? Well, a little before. I um, knew it was my, my chance of a lifetime, and I, I had to take full advantage of it. I did all the work I could on it to get it as good as I could get for tonight. You know, it's like when you fix your car, you don't know if it's going to break down or if it's going to keep running good. So, unfortunately, my, my arm didn't perform up to par like I expected it. The best of Pernell Whitaker, he fought the fight he should have fought. And, you know, I'm going to go now, have my arm checked thoroughly, get the right treatment, and Buddy McGregor to be back. Well, 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 tell me, when you went out for the first bell, did you already know, I've got to win this some other way? Or, or did you decide that you were going to try it to see if it would come to life? I was going to try it, you know. I said I got 
go out here and give it my best shot. You know, this is my chance of a lifetime. I'm fighting on HBO, you know, and I just wanted to go out there and give it my best. And I went out there, I tried it. It didn't compute once. I tried it again and again and again. But like I say, you know, my hat's off to Pernod Whitaker. He deserves these a good chance. Well, would you do that all in the fourth? I mean, in, a, in, in effect, you were putting your welterweight championship in jeopardy for this opportunity and for a million dollars. Would you do the same thing if you had it to do all over again? Well, sometimes you have to do what you don't want to do to get what you want in life. And I took a chance, you know, it messed up. But like I said, I'll be back. Tell us about Pernell Whitaker. You fought a lot of top fighters. How is he to fight? He's, he's good. He's not as, you know, he's a good boxer, but I don't think that he's good as they build him up to be, you know what I mean? Um, those times I was catching him with jabs, you know, with a half left arm, you know, so imagine. But, you know, um, he did what he had to do. He got the job done, and um, that's the best I can say. All right, two, two quick questions. You do have a rematch clause with him, as I understand it. How soon do you think you can get back in the ring well, with I'm him? Well, I'm going to go now and get my arm checked thoroughly and get the proper rest for it, and then after that, I'll take it from there. Brunel Whitaker apparently is going to fight Julio Cesar Chavez before the end of the year. How do you see that fight? Um, I, it's a toss-up. It's hard to really say. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank we, enjoy, we, enjoy, we enjoyed having you. Jim? All right, thanks a lot, Larry. Pretty classy. Our first chance to televise a Buddy McGirt fight, and I kind of wish we had had some other chances before now because he was just terrific. George, now we look ahead to Julio Cesar Chavez versus Fernell Whitaker down the line, a fight that so many in the sport are so anxious to see. Chavez is a relentless body puncher with a granite chin. Fernell is a great defender, great counter puncher, obviously with a pretty good chin of his own. Who should be favored? Hey, this Julio Cesar Chavez, Chavez is one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen in the ring. But Pernell Whitaker, he's got some skills. And I don't think we've seen even the best of him yet. And after Pernell took as many punches as he took tonight from Buddy McGirt, we will see contact in a Chavez Whitaker fight. It will not be the paint job that a lot of people might have suspected, right? Believe me, it would probably be one of the most equally matched fights of the century. All right, let's turn our attention momentarily to another.